This meeting is. <laughs> It's a okay. <laughs> so welcome everyone to the regular council meeting of September 9th, 2024. Uh, just before we begin, members of the public can be present in the council chambers during the meeting, and they can also observe the meeting via Zoom. Um, and you can click the link on the city uh, website to get to the YouTube site. Um, the first item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. And the recommendation is that the agenda for the regular regular council meeting be adopted as amended by removing item 6.1. And that is the item um, that council approved the award of the contract for the lower lockout reservoir road, a roof replacement project to high tech contracting limited in the amount of $240,981, plus all applicable taxes, fees, and charges. Councillor Benson, is there a seconder, please? Councillor Martin, all those in favor? Thank you, carried unanimously. Uh, the second item on the agenda is the adoption of minutes, and the recommendation is that the minutes of the Governance and Operations Committee meeting and the regular council meeting both held on August 19th, 2024, be adopted as circulated. Is there someone to make that motion, please? Councillor Benson, Councillor Cashall. That was carried unanimously, thank you. Um, item number three, we have a delegation here tonight and the delegation of Dean Self and Karen Trubitz, Columbia River Cleanup Project, and they have a presentation for us. Thank you very much for the invitation. Mayor Jones, council people, thank you very much. My name is Dean Self. Um, on behalf of my wife, Suzanne Self and Karen Krebitz, um, just a little uh, update on the Columbia River Cleanup Project that's been completed and, and sort of a view for the future. So let's share a screen. And we're starting at the end of the presentation, which is, we'll get there. All right. Good. So this is a Columbia River cleanup project, Car Wreck Eddy edition. And the story starts with a young fisherman who is now not quite such a young fisherman, but still a big fisherman, my son, Daniel. Uh, he came back for Christmas, uh, this last Christmas from North Carolina University. And um, one of the things that we did every day was go out for a walk along the, uh, the trail system by Trimac um, on the trail system created by this gentleman here, Jim Partridge. And we, part of the walk every day was him updating me on, you know, the, the, the classes he was taking. And one of the classes that was particularly impactful for him was an environmental law class. And a major theme of that class was how North American watersheds had been a dumping ground for more than 100 years. And so that, you know, the problem is immense. And, you know, he was talking about the different efforts being made to rectify it. So um, after a few days of walking, he had noticed some garbage up on the bank. And so the next walk, he brought a garbage bag. And while he was climbing the bank, I was looking down at Car Wreck Eddie and thought, what a disgrace. <laughs> Why is this still in our river? And then the thought occurred to me, what business do I have expecting somebody else to clean this up if I'm not willing to do my part? So a plan was hatched that involved making a cargo box for a fishing boat, obtaining a uh, cutting saw, a scrap metal recycling bin, and a strong asset that I hadn't anticipated at the time, which was an army of great local volunteers that just by word of mouth started to show up and help. And I imagine you're gonna recognize quite a few of these faces as we go along. But we just started, Suzanne and I started, and after a couple of days of work, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, people started to come. And here is just a, a list of the I tried to keep track. If I've missed any people on the list, I, I do apologize to them, but I think this is a fairly comprehensive list of the people who jumped in 
to help um, Jonathan and Howard at BB Rentals and Garrett White at, at Local Metal Recycling um, played a huge role in this project. So um, we worked on Car Wreck Eddie for eight days between February 18th and March 24th of this year. Um, there were 287 volunteer hours put in. Uh, we took out 47 boatloads of garbage, averaging 548 pounds per load. Um, we filled three of the large local metal recycling bins. Um, the result was that we got 30,000 pounds of metal debris out, as well as 2,200 pounds of non-metal garbage from, uh, from Car Wreck Eddie um, for a cost of $3,200, plus uh, $800 of in-kind donations from BB Rentals um, providing me the saw. So um, this project was completed as a proof of concept and we presented it to the Trail Wildlife Association um, as, a, as a possible project that they might want to adopt. And that was actually completed and they adopted um, the project in June of this year. Um, we need to map and quantify the remaining shoreline garbage between trail and the US border. Uh, we completed that in June as well. Um, there is roughly 60,000 pounds of remaining refuse, including 35 wrecked vehicles, at least 10 appliances, various industrial um, apparatus uh, along the way. And it's a dynamic situation as, the, um, as we have um, residents along the, the shoreline. Um, we are building partnerships with local governments and businesses, and that's ongoing. Um, we need to apply for a provincial permit to clean the cleanup of, of Crown land, and that is pending. Um, applying for grants to help offset ongoing costs. And when those things are complete, um, activating a growing team of volunteers that are already emailing, texting, phoning me, saying, when, when can we go again? So that is, th those are the next steps um, as we see them. Um, uh, Karen Trevitz has a PhD in watershed management and she's going to speak to the, the two paths we have for permitting to move forward. Thank you everybody. Um, I also invited uh, the Trail Wildlife Association Secretary Treasurer John Harmston to join us to answer questions that are club specific that he's qualified to answer that I'm not. Uh, so, as Dean said, thank you very much. Uh, my PhD is in water resources. Uh, it was stateside, so I, I was in Idaho. I had to actually take Western water law and other other courses that were kind of fun and interesting. And uh, uh, in fact, my um, prelim exams involved a big grant writing exercise, which has got to be the most valuable thing I was asked to do while I was in college not some exam that I'll never use again. Um, so I went off to uh, dig into what the law is here about for, for permitting. And the problem is that uh, it's crown land. We do need to get a, a permit. It's a change of use approval for the beds and banks of the river. It sounds kind of straightforward. It's under the Water Sustainability Act. Unfortunately, it's not that straightforward because there's not two tracks, one for like big industry and one for things like us cleaning up the riverbank. So they all kind of go into the same track. They mostly end up crossing the desk of uh, um, Tim Davies at, at the prom in provincial government. Um, and he, I spoke with him and he counseled me that if we could build a formal alliance with a local government office, uh, that the change use changes completely. It turns into uh, a notification with a 45-day turnaround. Um, and it would be under Section 39.1H uh, for the re restoration and or maintenance of stream channel by municipality or a regional district. Uh, so while we would love the city council support in general, we would love if the city council can also 
make loose little dollars here and there. The biggest task that we have is actually forming this formal alliance. Uh, the problem there would be that the city of Trail would have to put in the permitting. Uh, if we do it without the city, then I would be putting in the permitting on behalf of Trail Wildlife Association. It would be a 13, 15 month process. Um, so that means this ask comes with also asking for some staff time on the part of the city. I'd be happy to write uh, any of the language that's needed, the technical language, the methods, uh, what is actually getting modified, because they want us to show in this that we're not making a significant change to the riverbank. We're not making any big uh, uh, disturbances to fish habitat. So those are the things that these permits are covering. It's it's safeguarding our crown land and our crown shores and rivers. Uh, then the other question will be anything that's above the high water mark that's not crown. That is us going to every single landowner and saying, if you'd like me to be part of this, you actually have to give written permission. That's part of the rule. So we can't just go down the river and then start taking things that are higher up. Um, Trail, Trail Wildlife, for example, has a parks partnership at Beaver Creek Park, and we'll be writing that into our annual operating plan proposals for next year that uh, if parks, BC Parks is okay with it, we'll include taking out the pieces of metal that are above the waterline at, in Beaver Creek Park. But all each each and every one of those will be with individual permission. So uh, that's really what we're asking for today. And then from the other side, Trail Wildlife, we bring strength to the table. Uh, Trail Wildlife Association was founded in 1925. I actually have the founding documents in my house right now and the first ledgers. They were kind of fun. So we're approaching 100 years next year be kind of a good celebratory thing to go with. So we have all this collective experience in our club, conservation experience. Um, I can provide professional writing and, and help with permitting. Uh, as a, the club that we are, when our members are on a club project, we can cover them with work safe and liability. And John can speak more to that if needed. Uh, we do have the work of the nonprofit status for doing grant writing. Um, and John is our wonderful treasurer and secretary uh, and can answer questions about uh, uh, accounting um, beyond that. So I guess that's really where that's at. We're, we're not asking for money out late, but it will take some staff hours. Uh, and we are really, and I don't know what that will look like, whether that means that there's some written document that, that forms this partnership that would have to be explored. I don't know mm -hmm. what that looks like. Uh, and it may be something where I need to go back to 10 babies or make another phone call to uh, the, uh, the front counter office and say, what is it you need exactly to happen? Um, I don't know if you want to get back up for a minute. Yeah. And so, you know, what are our ultimate goals? Uh, we would really like to refresh our community's vision of what an amazing treasure the Columbia River is and foster an attitude of ownership and stewardship, particularly among Trail's younger citizens. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is to clean up the Columbia River from Trail down to the U.S. border. Um, we would like to encourage and perhaps assist we need a companies uh, to clean up the riverbank behind their businesses because that is a significant portion of the the, the refuse between as a hot spot. Mm -hmm. um, and we would like to promote participation in the annual river cleanup days to keep the Columbia beautiful. So that's that's our ultimate goal. Um, this is a, a, a little overview of the project from start to finish. Um, I'm not sure whether the comically heroic music comes through or not, but just to, you know, if any of you haven't been down walking along there, it give you a little bit of an idea of uh, where we started and where we finished. How many cars total? 
We took out 20 cars total, 19 from Car Rack Eddy and one from Upstream. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, we walk down there quite a lot and bike down there and it's mm -hmm. gone. It's just gone. Yeah. And, you know, we really, I really like to tip my hat again to the local volunteers who purely through word of mouth showed up and showed up and showed up. And you know that if people show up to volunteer to clean up other people's garbage on cold, sleeting February mornings, they're going to be the nicest people you could hope to meet. And they really are. So that's another interesting thing Dean just came up with. It was February, March. Winter time is the time to do this while the this river is This is just what it looks, low. sorry, what it looks like right now. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely clean. So while the river is low and we're not working in the water, right? Because almost all of these car wrecks are completely exposed or even high and dry. And as you uh -huh. saw from the dismantling process, we need to operate when the fire risk is low. Yeah. Well, this is behind TriMac? That's behind yeah. TriMac. And is that part of the trail then that you access just uh, the other side of the park? You walk down and you can just yeah. Yeah, you you walk, walk straight. Right down. Right down, right down, right down you know, you right where this was. Yeah, about 100 mm -hmm. yards further south from the south end of the Beaver Creek Park, you'll see where that is or where it was. Car you, come, you come to a that's car table, table. Well, not and then there's <laughs> just another little bit of trail and you're right in front of it. Mm -hmm. huh. It's interesting because those of us who work there have to take a double take because even we have to double check, is that still the same place? Because yeah. it, it's changed and it's good. And it, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was fun and I think we can do it for the rest. I have to rename it now. Yeah. <laughs> So I had a question, uh, actually, my understanding is that Columbia, uh, cleanup dates for rivers don't have a set date, right? Um, I think that would be BC Rivers Day, isn't it? And they go in and they clean up the garbage. But is that a set date or is that it's, something yeah, you September. Each I, set? I think it's at the end of September, actually. The last Sunday yes, in September. That, that doesn't work. It would be a good day to do well, we're actually hoping to present or um, promote this video and that on BC River Day. Perfect. If that's okay with you guys. We'd be thrilled. Delighted. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Our that's communications um, uh, director was asking about that. So she'll be watching this and um, be in touch with you guys to get more information if she needs it. Yeah. I also I have a nice uh, I create a map in Google um, Google Earth of all of the locations we've mapped now oh, okay. to date. Actually, I had sent me a slide, but it was like above our limit of slides. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've we've mapped forty eight discrete locations um, from just around the bend from Sunnydale, so across from Adnac. Mm -hmm. All the way down, almost to Winita Dam, and then below that, there's nothing. Wow! Both sides of the river, mm -hmm. there's a lot in there. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. you, and head. it's a two to three year project. It, it, yeah. This is not a one off mm -hmm. uh, because it'll require more manpower, more boat power, uh, um, and it's just going to take a lot of time to get that much metal out of mm -hmm. the river. Mm -hmm. And what we mapped was metals, not other miscellaneous garbage. Who knows what else is out there? That can mm -hmm. find a lovely way. Awesome. That okay. was one of the key comments that uh, Dean made was proof of concept. You know, in the past, Trail Wallet has looked up cleaning up the river. But back in the day, it was, well, how do you get all that stuff out of there? Helicopter? You know, it was a big deal, right? <laughs> so proof of concept was the Dean's idea of getting one of those portable saws, right? And cutting the thing into pieces, putting it on the boat is a game changer. Yeah. Because you're right. not hauling anything up the river bank. You're not dealing with the unstable banks. And, uh, although we do have some area of residents who have kind of indicated that we might be able to come down over their land to access discrete places so that volunteers don't all have to come in by boat. Mm -hmm. But it would be a case by case property owner permission. Um, we're not planning on trespassing anywhere. So now with, with what yeah. the answers I have done, we've got we've got an idea what it will cost. 
So that was a big deal, right? Now we have an idea. We can apply it. Agent. And um, we, so, sorry to interrupt. Dean, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, you know, we did about a third of the, by weight at least, of what we expect is going to be the job in three weeks, a little over three weeks yeah. um, with volunteers. And there's been a lot more people who've expressed interest in coming. So, you know, I think this is a really achievable project, but, you know, I would really like to keep it going this winter, not mm -hmm. wait until next winter or the winter after to continue. And so if we are able to partner and, and do the 45 day turnaround, that would be amazing. I don't know what barriers we face, but that would be the biggest ask. We're not asking for money. No. But uh, assistance to, turn, to keep working would be amazing. And on the flip side, any staff hours have value that can be leveraged in grant writing. Great. Uh, that would be, I, I would request personally for the grant writing that we can account for your staff hours. Can um, we get any kind of a estimate or an idea of like how much staff hours are we talking about? Like, I, I can do as much legwork as I can do. I can make all the phone calls. I can do all the writing. I don't know how long it, it would take your, your staff to actually go online and put it in. If I've got it all set up, it, it might be as little as an hour. Me handle. But I, I plan on doing all the, the boot work so that that's not late. We just have to kind of represent the data entry. Staff, that, that's my plan. Yeah. But it, it would probably take some collaboration collaborative time mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I don't have experience with yeah. especially with the Canadian system. I'm more recently integrated. Um, so I don't have experience with the the permitting online permitting system. Okay. And and I mean I can pull it up and say, oh these are all the questions, I'll write to this. Um and make sure these questions are all answered the mm -hmm. and here's some documents to upload. Uh, but then I would probably have to collaboratively sit down with somebody in your office as well and okay. say, is this everything you sure. need or do we sit together while you're uploading it? Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I okay. can't imagine that that yeah. would be a huge amount of time because I plan on doing that way work. Okay. Um, Councillor Benson had a question. Yes. So just so I understand, so um, on your own, it could take over a year of the permitting process, but if you partner with municipality, it shortens that process to 45 days. Exactly. Okay. And is there any issues with like that along the river, it, it leaves city of trail property and goes into like regional district area? That's like, one of you the need... questions that I'll okay. need to find out. Would, yeah. yeah. Although my understanding is doesn't City of Trail go from Oasis to Oneida? No. Where does it end? <laughs> Councilor Martin? Well, I don't know exactly. <laughs> but down <laughs> Highway 22A to probably one of the last uh, address residential locations for Beaver Park before the bridge. Yeah. 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 And, and tech owns the rest of it. Some of the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the you know, the, the two biggest concentrations are on the west bank below the Rock Islands. Okay. There's 13 or 14 vehicles there. Mm -hmm. And the uh, behind the Winita businesses. Okay. Um, it's The other sites are, are far more, you know, one-off sporadic sort of things. And so there's enough flexibility that we could move ahead where we have permission mm -hmm. while we wait to address other jurisdictional right. issues. Okay. But, you know, of note, it happened that um, BC Hydro had uh, teams working up in the Arrow Lakes at the same time that we were working here. And part of their messaging was, you know, they had bobcats and, and various power equipment. They said that some sites are so sensitive yeah. that we only work by hand. and that's all we do. Like all of our work right. is lift, carry, move it away, leave the Very place respectful. Intact. Yeah. Okay. 
Can I ask a maybe a really stupid question? No. How do the why are the why how do the cars get there? Like why are they there? Because it's really fun to watch it tumble. Is that down, seriously what down, happens? Yeah. Oh yeah. Just just listen to Alice's restaurant, you know. It's, it's <laughs> what decade do we got about these cars? We had uh, cars fifties, sixties. Uh, really? Some as old as forties mm -hmm. and one that was the seventies. But one thing I didn't know was the area where Tramac was, there used to be a stock car track there. And so some of them had um, modifications of like, oh, that makes sense now. Right. But there was, I mean, there was an old car, like, it would appear to have been a Brinks truck that had under the rear end of it, you know, the, the steel plating was a three foot by five foot, four inch thick steel plate underneath it was it's a bit of work to disassemble wow. just to cut it oh, oh, God. God. and on the fort shepherd side it's for like example computer. there's a paint vw bug but somebody yarded the engine out before they sent it off the edge oh, mm -hmm. this is wow. so yeah it's it's stunning if you ever met it you know if you, and how can, how can people and, volunteer and down the river how can people right. volunteer to help just if we're not a member of the Wildlife well, is that any, I mean, we have just had people, anybody who wants to, walks up, okay. bring your gloves, bring yeah. your boots, oh, yeah. and, and whatever part you like, if you, I mean, what we didn't speak to is we took out over a thousand pounds of broken glass right. from car wreck getting, right? Not just metal. So, you know, there's, there's a place for people, you don't have to be, you know, burly hauling you know, car parts. There's a lot of wow. room for anybody who wants to volunteer. And I guess in my grand vision, I would like to see some of maybe some of the kids service groups um, involved. And so maybe they're less likely to leave, you know, uh, a dozen cans behind their um, right. river party yeah. and, and take ownership. Yeah, it's a, if it's a trail wildlife association project, and the people working <clears throat> under that project will be covered with our um, our, our, uh, our insurance that we have for volunteers. Right. So, you know, okay. so they're all covered up. Any musicals or? Okay. You know, so I, I think that that would be critical then that, that our work days are set yeah. as trail wildlife yeah. uh, work days sure. because otherwise we don't have the work safe and life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those, are, those will be formal planning yeah. process. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for your time. time. So great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so, all. So yes, your time. I was just going to say we will take this information mm -hmm. and um, give it to staff, and we'll uh, get back to you. And thank you so much for the presentation and the work that you're doing. I think it's amazing. The difference in the river is just amazing. When you walk your dog down there, and it's so clean, and yeah, it looks really great. So thank you guys very, very much. Thank you. Thank okay. you for your time. Thank yeah, you very much for inviting us and look forward to looking for more. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, on to public question period, and I see no one uh, here tonight for qu public question period. So we'll move to item number five, and that's the adoption of the Governance and Operations Committee recommendations from August 19, 2024. And the first item is 5.1. The recommendation is that the 2024 second quarter financial report for the six months ended June 30, 2024, be received for information. Councillor Martin. Councillor Butler, all those in favor? Thank you. Uh, item 5.2, recommendation that council receive <laughs> August 19, 2024, memorandum titled Update Victoria Street Encampment Fire and Bylaw Services for information. Councillor Butler, thank you. A seconder, please. Martin, Councillor Martin, all those in favor? Thank you. Carried unanimously. Mayor Jones, if I may? Yes. I just want to say thank you to uh, Ms. Butler for this report. Very thorough, very comprehensive, mm -hmm. and uh, thank you. Excellent report. I agree. Thank you, uh, Councillor Cashaw. 
5.3 recommendation that the council adopt the amended community safety task force terms of reference and that staff be directed to advertise for the vacant seats on the community safety task force up to two community members, one being from the senior citizens community and one at large community member and up to one business community member. Councilor Martin and Councilor Butler, all those in favor? Thank you, carried unanimously. Uh, 5.4, that council approved the strata conversion policy, GG 006.3. I'm just going to recuse myself. Okay, thank you, Councilor Becker. And that the City of Trail Strata Title Conversion Guidelines be rescinded. Councilor Cashwell? Is there a seconder? Councilor Martin, did you have a question? No. I'm just... Okay, seconder, Councilor Martin. All those in favor? I just want to see it. Are we voting on the new Strata Conversion? With the, the amendments, the new yeah. of amendments. Okay. I don't see what, okay. So um, all those opposed? Um, okay, uh, I'm recording so, Councillor okay. Wilson as opposed as well. Okay. So it's defeated. 5.5. Recommendation is that council approve a cash grant grant in the amount of one thousand dollars in support of Gamey's night. Councillor Benson, the seconder, Councillor Butler. May I speak to that, Mayor Jones? Yes, absolutely. First of all, I apologize; I wasn't able to uh, to speak to this when it came to uh, the governance operations committee on the nineteenth. Uh, my concern on this, and I, I want to be clear if I'm not against the, the project or the purpose behind the, the grant request. My concern is, it, it looks to me like it's an incomplete grant request. We have Ms. Cameron who represents, there's no, there's no documentation to say that she's part of any kind of organization. And we certainly don't have any kind of financial report with it. So to me, uh, it's, it's hard to <laughs> approve when it doesn't meet our, our basic uh, criteria for accepting the application. So on that note, I'm going to be opposed to it. I just wanted to make that on the record. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments before we move for the vote? <coughs> okay. Um, all those in favor of the recommendation. And those opposed. Thank you. Recommendation 5.6 that council approve a cash grant in the amount of $500 in support of the West Kootenai Invitational be hosted by the Beaver Valley Skating Club. Councillor Benson, Councillor Martin, those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Recommendation that council approve approve a cash grant in the amount of $1,000 in support of the 44 Engineer Squadron 75th Anniversary Celebrations. Councillor Butler, a seconder, please, a third. Councillor uh, Wilson, all those in favor? May I speak to yes, Jones please before? Do. Again, um, I'm looking at the application and I, again, it's another, in my opinion, an incomplete application uh, put forward by the uh, the, uh, the applicant, there's no financial statement. So my question would be, how can we justify the grant if we don't know their financial needs? So in my opinion, it's an incomplete application. I would make a motion that it be sent back to Mr. Wendman for that attachment. Um, but until I see a financial statement to, which emphasizes the financial need, uh, I can't support this motion. Thank you for that motion. Okay. Are you, are you making a motion there then, Councillor Cashman? No, I'll pass on the motion. I just want to be on the record. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So we have a, a mover and a seconder. All those in favor of $3,000. Okay, thank you. Carried. Opposed. And yeah, Councillor Cashman opposed. Item 5.8. 
recommendation that council approve a cash grant in the amount of five thousand dollars in support of the trail historical society's purchase of a grade marker to recognize the lives and deaths of trails founding father eugene sayer topping his wife mary jane hannah and her daughter estella hannah bramford bamford I need to, um, is there someone that wants to make that motion? Councillor Butler, Councillor um, Martin, second. All those in favor? I'd like to speak to it as well, for the record, if that's possible. <laughs> okay. I'm, okay. Uh, I'd like to voice my opposition to this grant for five thousand dollars. I, I, I can't see how it benefits trail. I, I think if I was to poll our constituents, our taxpayers, they would be probably in agreement with me. We're spending five thousand dollars to upgrade. Cemetery headstone, headstones in Victoria. Uh, uh, I appreciate the history behind it. I appreciate the report that uh, servants and board put forward, but I just can't support this. I think it's, a, it's something that our, our taxpayers shouldn't have to, uh, to uh, put money towards. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay. Well, I um, just a quick comment on that and full disclosure. I'm not related to that. <laughs> As I thought before, um, I did uh, receive a call from someone that had uh, a lot of history on the historical society. And uh, I think this is just to recognize um, the history that is uh, part of trail. And their graves right now are unmarked. And so I think it's really important that we recognize that and keep that history there. And I think something like this would be judged on a, um, you know, a one-time expense. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, the idea of marking the graves is fine, but it's, first of all, it's in Victoria. What benefit does it bring to trail? And it's $5,000 of taxpayers' money. And I had, when I first saw it, I listened to the, uh, the presentation and I went, I, I, I mean, my first reaction was, wow, $5,000. And then I paused for a bit and reflected on it. And then I put myself in the position of what the average constituent would have gone. And I still went, wow, $5,000 for grade markers in Victoria. I just think it's, uh, it's money that uh, I, I can't support spending on behalf of the taxpayer. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Cashel. Any other comments or questions before we go through the vote? Okay. All those in favor of the recommendation? Oppose, Councillor Cashel. Thank, Thank you. you. Item six is the adoption. Oh, no, sorry, that's been deferred to next week, <laughs> to next meeting. Um, item seven communications, unsightly premises, 1759 Second Avenue. And I'll pass that over to Ms. Lucini. Um, yes, uh, uh, sorry, we're just reading the recommendations on those. Uh, so the property located at 1759 2nd Avenue um, uh, is not being maintained and currently fails to meet the standard that uh, is required of property owners pursuant to the city's unsightly premises bylaw. Um, it is therefore recommended that council issue an order for the property owner to remove the discarded materials from the property and to additionally uh, cut the grass, uh, the uh, yard is in, in quite a bad condition. And if uh, not, if in default of doing so, the city undertake to do the work um, pursuant to the unsightly premises bylaw. So, uh, any the recommendation is before you. Is there someone to make that motion? Councillor Benson and seconder is Councillor uh, Butler. All those in favor? Great. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, item 7.2 is the proclamation request. Uh, the recommendation is that Council proclaim September 15th to the 21st, 2024, as Legion Week in the City of Trail. Councillor Cashel and Councillor Butler. All those in favor? Carried okay, unanimously. Uh, 
Awesome. Number eight is bylaws, the trail uh, recreation fee amendment bylaw number 2945-2024. And I will pass that on to... It just needs to be, team. just needs to, the recommendation can just be read. Okay. Yeah. The recommendation of the trail recreation fee amendment bylaw number 2945-2024 be adopted. Councillor Cashall, Councillor Butler, all those in favor. Thank you, carried unanimously. Uh, on to committee reports. And Councilor Benson, you're up first. Thank you, Mayor Jones. On August 22nd, I attended a webinar hosted by Community Features East Kootenai in partnership with Selkirk Innovates on childcare in the Kootenays. It provided results of a research project that they did to understand the business needs and challenges of childcare providers in the Kootenay region. Um, and the results you can you can find online on their website. On September 3rd, I attended the Trail Community Action Team meeting uh, online. Um, Interior Health has sent out a alert regarding the number of overdoses with severe outcomes in the trail area as of late. On September 7th, I attended Smoky Palooza and helped greet 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 guests. Uh, this was a second annual event and has proven to be an excellent community evening. I want to acknowledge Allison McCarthy, Craig Clare, Angela Prentice, and everyone at the Smoke Eaters for organizing such a great event. And a special thank you to the Murphy Family Foundation for supporting the families in trail. Uh, because of the foundation, youth under 15 were allowed to attend the event for free, which is great. Uh, and then today I had the opportunity to tour um, the different facilities downtown um, in an effort to learn more about the Trail Association for Community Living. Um, I toured their administration office, their thrift shop, the inclusion center, their day program center, and I finished off with a visit to Alpha House. Um, I got to meet their staff and some of their clients and get a better understanding of the overall services that are provided by TACL. Uh, and I'll be touring some of their supportive homes in the upcoming months if anyone from council wants to join me. That is my report. Thank you, Councillor Benson. Uh, Councillor Butler. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Jones. On behalf of Council, I attended the following meetings and events. On the 23rd of August, I attended the grand opening of the New Confluence Centre in Castlegar, which is a lovely new addition to our region. On the on August 24th, I was delighted to join in and spend the day at the Trail Farmers Market uh, celebrating Pride. The Small But Mighty Organizing Committee pulled off Trail's first ever Pride Parade. It was wonderful to see uh, so many community partners that turned up and to be part of the parade. I'd also like to extend a, uh, a sincere thank you to the Trail RCMP for their escort. On the 26th, I attended a collaboration meeting with our partners at Pacific Coastal Airlines, along with Councillor Hansen, who acts as the chair of the committee. Uh, we look forward to welcoming Pacific Coastal to Trail October 3rd. For a business after business event, your invite should all be in the mail shortly. Uh, lastly, although I know I've just forgotten something as well, but on September uh, the 6th, along with Mayor Jones, uh, Mayor Morissette, Councillors Hanson Martin, and the Honorables Katrine Conroy and Brittany Anderson, I was delighted to attend the announcement of the new MRI extension at the Trail Regional Hospital, a $36 million investment in regional health care. Um, and along with all the rest of us, we all attended. And so I'm sure someone else will speak to it. The uh, 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 open house or the opening of the uh, new shelter here in trail. Thank you, Mary Jones. That's the end of my report. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Butler. Councillor Cashall. I have nothing to report, Mary Jones. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Councillor Hansen sends her regrets tonight. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Jones. On behalf of Council, I attended the following meetings. On Thursday, August the 27th, I also sat in on the Child Care and the uh, presentation. Um, Councillor Benson has uh, talked about everything that needs to be talked about, but I just want to say that demand is exceeding the supply with long wait lists. Some centers that are currently operating have not opened all their available spots because of staffing and caregiver, caregiver and child ratios. On Wednesday, August 28th, I attended an RDKB board meeting trail. Uh, Army Basin Trust provided an organizational update. President and CEO Johnny Skolayoff briefed the board on high-level activities in 2024 and how they are facing a major challenge with equipment failure at the Arrow Lakes Generating Station. 
Ken Kleznikoff introduced the Forestry Works for BC campaign, which aims to raise awareness about the critical role forestry plays in the well-being of rural and urban communities. The board will be writing a letter of support for this campaign to provincial representatives. Uh, the community works applications, the old gas tax fund, uh, uh, Mountain Medical Services, uh, the ski patrol hut is big white, uh, $54,218 for upgrades there. And the uh, Grand Forks ATV Club, their request was $16,350 to upgrade the trail network infrastructure. On Tuesday, September 3rd, I also attended the TCAT meeting. Uh, one the information that I was just uh, shocked at that 40 people have died from overdoses in trails since 2016. That fella Chella is coming back to trail to tour local schools. On Wednesday, September 4th, along with mayor and council, attended a tour of the new temporary shelter. On Thursday, September the 5th, I attended an RDKB liquid, liquid waste management plan meeting and trail. The Columbia Pollution Control Center construction started on July the 11th. Dealing with soils on site, testing of the soils is currently taking place, and asbestos abatement of the old SPCA building is also being completed. There will be an official ribbon cutting photo op in November after the provincial election, which will include another detailed press release. On Friday, September 6th, as already mentioned, along with Mayor and other members of Mayor Jones and other members of Council attended the walking tour of the KBFRH, explaining where the new MRI suite will be built. They will be there, and they're also replacing the mobile MRI with uh, uh, to uh, re they're replace the current one that's there because the current one breaks down. Um, there is no MRI at KBRH, so they're going to replace that. That mobile MRI will be in place at another location on site when the construction starts. Um, during the MRI construction, they're going to lose 14 parking stalls, but once it's completed, uh, they're going to add 19 to 23 stalls throughout the uh, entire parking lot with upgrades and paving and uh, painting of the lines for um, parking. Project timeline is designed and start is August 2024, procurement of general contractor February 2026, construction start, <clears throat> excuse me, July 2026, and target completion date of June of 2028. Um, total cost, as already mentioned, 35.9 million with the contribution request to the West Cookie Boundary Regional Hospital District of 14.4 million. Uh, the KBRH Health Foundation is in discussions on their, with the uh, Ministry of Health or Interior Health, I should say, on their funding participation of this project. That's it for my report. Anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Martin. That very detailed description of our tour of the MRI machine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, that's exciting. Um, Councillor uh, Wilson. Thank you, Worship. Uh, can you let me know? Can you, you guys hear me okay? Yeah, uh, we can hear you great. On August the 22nd, I attended the LCIC's uh, going away celebration for Rebecca Richards. And so just on behalf of the city, I wanted to thank them for having us and to wish Rebecca all the best. It was great. <clears throat> Her and, and watching her develop through the LCIC and I'm sure she'll go on to do some some really great things and that's it for my report thank you thank you Councillor Wilson okay on for my report tonight I um in no certain order here I just uh wanted to um report to council that I attended the overdose awareness event that was held August 31st in Jubilee Park, just outside of the library. Um, this event is held every year to recognize and remember loved ones and friends that have passed from overdoses. Many people spoke about the family members that have passed and it was also recognized that members from two of the recent overdoses were at the event in attendance and they also got up and spoke. Um, about the their recent overdoses. So it was very moving and very lots of information was uh, shared. And it's an event that um, was very kind of overwhelming, I have to say. Uh, it's the first time they've tried this event outdoors like this, and it was a beautiful setting, and I think it went really, really well. I think there was over 100 people. Councillor Cashall was there. Um, uh, it was just a great turnout. Uh, it was nice to see. 
the Kootenai Boundary Regional Fire Rescue. Uh, the Regional Fire Training Center is being erected in the Gulch right now, and I had an opportunity to go up and, and see it with um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Chief uh, Derby and um, Regional District Linda Worley. <laughs> Um, uh, we did it, have a quick little tour of it. It's great. The regional district um, thanked us and um, for providing the land uh, so that the um, Kootenai Boundary Regional Hospital Training Center could be there because if we hadn't, they hadn't been uh, able to do that, they wouldn't have been successful in their $300,000 grant or have a location for the building. So the land is now being leased from the city and the training center is there for a three year period of time and it'll be reassessed. And they're really hoping that they can bring in firefighters from the region. Uh, it'll be a while before they do that to get the training, which will be great because then they don't have to travel to access the training and the cost will be, a, a, there'll be a great um, cost savings there as well. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, how excited I was to be a part of the announcement that our city will soon have its own uh, permanent MRI machine. I think the addition of that for the city of Terrell is just going to, it just um, represents a significant advancement in healthcare services for our community. And it's really going to improve our local diagnostic capabilities, um, allowing residents to access medical imaging locally and without the need to travel to larger centers as well. And we all know that quicker access to the MRI machine means that um, earlier diagnosis for um, residents of trail and surrounding area this just makes um, better patient outcomes. It's a really important uh, addition to our community. I wanted to mention that we have a very busy week next week. We will be traveling to UPCM the week of September 16th. Councillor Benson, Councillor Martin, and Councillor Hansen, along with myself and CAO McClure, will be attending the Union of BC Municipalities Convention in Vancouver. And we're looking forward to many of the workshops and events that we'll be attending on behalf of the city. But most importantly, we're meeting with several ministers while we're down there. We have meetings scheduled with the Minister of Housing, Ravi Kalun, Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General Mike Farnsworth. Uh, we're meeting with the BC Assessment Staff, uh, Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, Jennifer Whiteside, and we're still waiting to hear back from the RCMP executive and interior health executive. So we have a full week ahead of us. I also wanted to um, let you know that the BC Winter Games board members will be in trail on September 24th and 25th to tour our facilities. And the full committee will be meeting in Roslyn to have its first face-to-face -face meeting with everyone. And we uh, have one position that we're still looking to fill, and that is the food services director. And if anyone is interested, please reach out to the city for directions to apply. And I also wanted to um, speak about the uh, position that I put my name forward um, to the FCM, the um, federal Canadian Municipalities um, Board, and uh, I put my name forward to be on the Rural, Northern and Rural Committee, uh, and I was accepted. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's a great opportunity for um, our community to have a voice at the federal level, and we are a rural community. And I think it will be interesting to hear what um, communities across Canada, you know, what they're um, going through and their issues are and how we can collaborate together and come up with solutions. And I'm looking forward to be uh, to being on that committee. So the only um, 
other information that, that I can share with you at this time about that committee is that I know that they meet four times a year and it's a hybrid, um, uh, you know, you can attend by Zoom if you want to, or if uh, you, also if you're close enough, you can attend by in person. And my goal is to attend by Zoom. I don't plan on traveling to um, Ottawa or any place across Canada to attend these meetings. Our first meeting, uh, if the recommendation does go through, would be uh, September 18th and 19th in Ottawa, which clearly I'm going to be at the UBCM for. So um, I don't know if there's any other questions from Council um, before I put the recommendation forward. Uh, Councillor Benson. Should it say June 2020? Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. Term. I was going to point that out. June 2025 or 2026? Yeah, it's a one year term. Okay. And so there would be four meetings in that one year term. And then I think after that, they probably re repost it. Councilor Cashon. So, Mayor Jones, just for clarity, you're stating that you're not planning any travel to be associated to this committee when the recommendation is that all costs associated with the appointment for travel committee meetings and relevant board activities be covered by the city of trail. So why is the recommendation before us if you're not planning on travel? travel? My question. Um, Ms. Uh, your worship through the council. This is the motion that the FCM wants. Um, they want this because this is the motion that every single one of their board members has to have passed in order to be there. It's sort, sort of a form motion. So it was, um, yeah. it's, it's in the correspondence from them that I, yeah, I read that as well. Thank you, Ms. So this is what they want in that motion so they can move forward with the appointment. But as Mayor Jones has stated, um, that this committee does not, uh, it's not a objective of, of theirs for everyone across Canada to come in person. So with, with technology, but it leaves it open for that. It, it could. Yes, it could. And I think that um, uh, um, CAO McClurk speak to the fact that this is not, if there was any funding associated with this, it does not come out of the funding associated with other councillors attending FCM. This would be separate. Uh, there's actually a budget. There has always been a budget for mayor's expenses. There's also another one for some council expenses as well. There's about $3,500 in the, in the mayor's budget that's been there for longstanding. So. I could see there um, might be an expense if there was a face-to-face -face meeting um, during the FCM, you know, when they would bring everybody together for that. But other expenses, I, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not interested in taking that time away from the, the city work to travel. I mean, I prefer to do it all by Zoom, quite honestly. Well, I would like to make a maybe make a motion that this matter be kind of deferred until council has an opportunity to look at what our policy and practice is on becoming associated to these committees. I mean, don't we need some kind of a protocol? Like if I just want to join a committee, I can join, like shouldn't there be a, do we have any practice on that? Do we have any policy on that? Or is it just the up to the The only policy is that it comes to council for a resolution, just like the FCM. And honestly, I can't get more information until I pass the recommendation and then I'm able to get into the website and find uh, to be able to join the meetings. And it's quite a detailed um, procedure here. Um, I also believe the 16th is the day. It is. It's about a 20 page long document that I have to go through to get in there. It's quite a detailed. Um, but my, the, I honestly believe that we need to have that voice out there for rural BC. And we live in rural BC, and that's my objective, is to make sure that our issues are being heard at every level of government possible. Well, we do send the candidate every year to the okay. FCM. Yeah, this is a uh, bit different. I mean, that's yeah. to the conference. This would be someone kind of sitting Specific on the board. Committee. Yeah, okay. just a, it's a committee. It's a rural committee. Um, I mean, uh, not uncommon. There's been, I think, I remember there's a lady over in the RDCK that was on one of these sort of things. It's not... Um, I don't think it's onerous per se, and uh, I would suggest that um, they uh, uh, just the opportunity for a year. There's really nothing that uh, you know. It's not a, some sort of rogue organization. It's FCM, so to speak. So that's the only uh, you know 
it'd be maybe different if it was, it was an organization you were unfamiliar with or more concerned yeah, about course. what their affiliation is, but it is FCM. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely in um, support of your participation. I would just, I think, it's fair to say on behalf of council here, I think it just would have been nice if staff would have provided some kind of reporting on the matter of approximate costs related to uh, what it would involve. Because I mean, to Councilor Cashel's point, we are kind of giving a green light or on a very vague recommendation and motion. And I understand it is just the boilerplate. FCM language, but um, I think it's important that we're transparent to our taxpayers. So, so, and I, 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 I truly, I, I know that Mayor Jones is quite heavily involved with a lot of these activities, but it would be just nice to know, mm. you know, where it would have been at. You know, are we signing a $3,500 check, a $35,000 check, or a $350,000 check? Yeah, and, and, and then the policy good. does. I would also like, you know, maybe for the benefit of the newer counselors, we do have the policy on staff travel or expenses for council and, and yep. traveling to conferences. Yep. And that was really streamlined in the last term yep. to uh, cut a lot of costs out of there that were frivolous. So, uh, mm -hmm. so sorry, yeah. uh, not to interrupt, but would that go for every committee that we're on? Every committee that we're on where we had an opportunity to travel for uh, certain events or training or workshops or do you want that policy to be included for all the committees well i just i just feel that we have a we had a policy that was was sort of agreed upon on this kind of stuff and it would just maybe it would have been i'm just suggesting that staff could have brought it forward so that the rest, you know for the rest of council just to have a better <laughs> understanding of, of, well quite of, honestly of i was really quite surprised that even got us selected yeah no and, and, you, and yes first of all congratulations yeah. yes yes so, oh thank you yeah. but I mean it was in between council meetings yeah. and as soon as I find, found out I alerted you guys that hey this is what happened because mm -hmm. I was quite excited it about it I thought it was a great opportunity for our community and yeah I can't get any any I don't have the process in front of me because until the recommendation goes through, I can't get that information for you. And as soon as I get it, I'll, sh I'll share it with you. And if you have any, you know, changes or anything, September 23rd, we can, you know, yeah. Any other questions? Councilor Martin. Oh, I just want to make a comment. I was fortunate through the regional district to go to FCM last year. It's something I would recommend anybody to go to. And if you have an opportunity, whether it's through FCM or not, if you can get on some type of committee that may help rural BC and our city, I think it's something we should take advantage of. So I'm going to support this recommendation if it comes to vote. Thank you, Councilor Martin. Councilor Benson. And congratulations on the oh. subject. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people that put their names for it. So yeah, they're going, but thank you. Okay. If there's no other questions, then I'll read the recommendation. The recommendation is that council approve the appointment of Mayor Colleen Jones to serve as a FCM non-board committee member until June 2025 with all costs associated with the appointment for travel to committee meetings and relevant board activities to be covered by the City of Trail. Someone to, okay, um, Councillor Benson. A seconder, please, Councillor Butler. All those in favor? It's carried. Um, Ms. Councillor Cashel, do you want to be opposed? Yeah, I'll be on record as opposed. Thank okay. you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Any new business? Okay. Uh, call for adjournment, please. Councillor Benson, Councillor Butler. All those in favor? Councillor Cashel, are you opposing that? Did you put your hand up? I've been opposing everything, but no, I'm not opposing the adjournment. <laughs>